What's going on, people? This is Dwayne, host of the Is It Me podcast. Uh, dropping back in with you guys with another podcast slash YouTube video. I wanted to touch on this subject of a uh, rapper Kodak Black getting engaged uh, to a young lady. She goes by the name of Mellow Rex. I'm going to assume that she's another, uh, like a fellow artist. I believe she's from Florida. But uh, Kodak just got released from uh, from prison. He got a uh, pardon from the former president. Um, so he's fresh out, you know, fresh out of prison. I mean, maybe you know, prison changed him a little bit. You know, being away from a, you know, being away from a woman's touch, had him come out thinking, you know, hey, um, I really need somebody by my side or whatnot. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think he's that. Um, not to say you have to be, you know, not to say you have to be the brightest person in the world to to settle down and stuff like that. It's more more or less who you settle down with versus just settling down with anybody. Um, I've looked at tons of interviews with Kodak. Uh, I've watched, you know, his music videos and stuff like that. Just in, intermittently, like, like having him on in the background and like my younger cousins playing his music and stuff like that. He had, a, he had a few songs I liked. Um, I, I see where the talent, you know, he, he, he can rap, you know, not that he say he not, he's not like on a level of a, like how, a what we would call a lyricist, but he makes, you know, real good catchy songs and stuff. So to the main subject, him proposing and getting engaged. Now he hasn't fully, fully went through it yet as far as getting married. But the question is, is it a good idea for him to get married? He's rich, he's young, and he spends a lot of money on stuff that he you know, that he spends a lot of money on stuff that depreciates with time. Even like these chains that he got on, I'm pretty sure the majority of them are real. This jewelry, that doesn't even do. I mean, it's not. It's not like he's getting like Rolexes stuff that you know he could sell later on down the line for the same or equal or more value. He's getting custom made jewelry that no other person is gonna want to buy. There's no used chain market for rappers when you start getting broke. So. That right there lets you know that he's not real, you know, wise when it comes to, you know, spending his money. Not that I'm trying to count his pockets, but that money is going to last long. You know, you're not going to be on top of the world forever, with, you know, with the music. This money you're making now is not going to be the same type of money you're going to be making some years down the line. So getting married. All right, good. You get married. What is this woman bringing to the table for him? Is she self-sufficient already? Does she make more money than him? Because that's the only way I could see a wealthy man even getting married to a woman is if she makes more money than him, you know, or if you're just a, because we all know what's going to happen. If you get to marry, if you get married sooner or later, you know, the divorce is coming. You know, some people, some people have a nice run of, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, but especially with celebrities, that's rare. So more than likely, let's say he gets married, you know, later on this year. I'd say by 2025, 2024 is going to be a divorce popping up somewhere. And plus he has an open, another open, you know, case. You know, so you get married to her now and then there's no, there's no guarantee that you won't get locked back up. So now, now you're trusting this woman with all your money. I'm pretty sure he take care of it, take care of his mother, family members, other friends. You can't. Tr- how can you truly trust somebody to just hand them over your empire? You know when you have all that on the line. I don't think he's the brightest bulb in the box. You know. You know, judging by a lot of his interviews, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, he was smart enough to get a pardon from Trump or to offer some money so Trump can pardon him out." You know, that's that's totally not the case. I mean. <laughs> If anything, his lawyers probably came up with that. His lawyers behind the scenes were probably, you know, 
uh, lobbying to get him uh, that pardon. The same way Lil Wayne was lobbying behind the scenes. You know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take much to say, hey, there's only one person, one or two people that can get you out of this. You know, you might want to say something nice about this person or you might want to be nice to him or promise him something, you know, you know, grease, grease a few palms. So, you know, you probably can get up out of, out of this jam, out of the situation you're in. You don't have to be a, you know, <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to even figure that out. I'm pretty sure his lawyers were behind the scenes pulling the strings on uh, executing that plan. But back to him getting married, like, like what value is she going to bring to the relationship other than looks? You know, those looks are going to be gone in, you know, six, seven years. Stuff is going to start hanging and sagging. You know, are you going to have kids? I'm pretty, you know, usually when people get married, they want to have kids. I'm seeing a big bill later on down the line for Kodak Black. I want to say around 2026, he's going to be on child support. He's going to be getting divorced. She's going to be asking for <clears throat> Excuse me. She's going to be asking for half. And she's going to be asking for not only half of everything, she's going to be asking for spouse support. She's going to be asking for child support. And so... You know, let's say this guy's got, you know, <laughs> let's say over the next few years he, he he makes another, you know, 30 mil, 40 mil. He's going to have to give half of it up. What is she doing to contribute to help him make any of that money? Truth be told, nothing. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, like, I would say even for an average Joe, and even for an average guy, there is no benefit to getting married. Like, like let's say if you let's say if you're working at um, you're starting off a new relationship. You're young. One of y'all are working at Walmart. The other one's working at a bank. You know, let's say you let's say y'all bringing home together. Y'all living in the same house, cohabitating. Let's say y'all bringing home. You know. 60,000 combined. Now, where I live at, that's a that's a decent amount of money. That's a, you know, I don't I don't live in like a, a big city like a big state like California, New York, or Florida, like places like that where the where the um, rent and stuff is uh ex- extremely high. 60 grand a year, you could you could have a pretty good lifestyle uh, here in the Midwest. And 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 most of the places in the Midwest. But let's say you got that, you bring home that 60 grand. And let's say you have two kids together. Y'all could, you know, when tax time rolls around, y'all single, file single, one of y'all, y'all split the kid claiming, and y'all end up getting a decent refund back. But let's say you get married. You know what's going to happen when you get married? They, they viewing as, oh, so y'all not just making, you know, 35, 30,000 a piece, y'all making 60 grand together. So the government's like, all right, you 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 owe us more money. You owe us you owe us more money, and <laughs> and we're not gonna give you any incentive on getting married. We're not gonna give you any tax break for getting married. It 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 just doesn't happen. And this is my personal experience. Maybe everybody you know didn't didn't have to go through this or whatnot, but I know for a fact when I got married. I went from getting a, you know, I didn't get that much of a bigger refund. I probably used to get like a few hundred dollars. You know, when you claim the kid, probably like a, you know, like $1,200 or something like that. But when y'all got married, boom. Oh, you owe two grand in uh, federal taxes. You owe 900 in state taxes. It's ludicrous. So for me personally, there was no incentive for getting married other than being able to like share um health insurance that's it that was the only thing health insurance so for a rich person you know if it, you know if i got a few mil in the bank i'm not going to just go marry somebody you know that number one somebody that i haven't known. like if it was somebody that i've known since i was a kid or like teenager or something like that and i know that they truly have feelings for me you know they they not so they not just falling in love with me because I have money or or because of who I am and you know in in societal status. 
I am not. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I'm stingy. I don't think I'm stingy, <laughs> but it's just not a it's just not a good um. It's just not a good good look for him. I'd I'd say. You know, it's one thing at least you know be in a relationship first. You know, go out on dates. Uh, have the have the woman go through some hard times with you at least, at least so that way you know, hey, if I get sick or something like that, you know, you got to see how this woman interacts with your family. Like, how's she gonna treat my mom if I'm not around? Like, if something happens to me and this woman has my fortune, is she gonna take care of my mom? You know, <laughs> you, it's just uh, so many variables to just being wealthy and uh and getting married. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to say, you know, I say give it 12 years, he'll be broke, you know, because uh, unless he's got some type of a, a amazing, uh, you know, publishing deals and stuff like that with his music, and unless he's smart on that end, and, and even if he, and even if he is smart on that end, she's going to be getting a large, large portion of that too, if he gets married, you know, after that divorce. You know, and then because the courts are not going to care about, hey, yeah, I used to make, you know, a few million every year, but I don't make that type of money anymore. They don't care. You have to pay the money, especially like here. I, I remember for the short time that I was on child support for a few years, like when I first got on child support, I had a really good. I had a I had a decent job for for um for a person in their late teens. I was making a nice amount of money. So my child support, I had to pay $550 a month, which that's like, a, you know, that's rent at, a, at an apartment around here. So when it happened, I ended up getting another job, you know, came back down to reality, making around the same amount of money as you would think somebody in their late teens would be making. Uh, so I went from making, you know, half of what I was but you know what? They still wanted that five hundred dollars. So what did they do with my check? I remember it like it was yesterday. My boss came. My boss used to. They used to give our checks to our supervisors, and the supervisors would pass the checks out to the, to the um, to the hourly uh, employees. So my boss ended up looking at my check one day, and she said, "Oh my gosh, I got a lawyer that can that can help you out of this because." Nobody can live off of this. So what happened was she was looking at my check. You know, this was an eighty-hour. We got paid every two weeks, so this was an eighty-hour check. And out of the eighty hours, I got paid one hundred and sixty-five dollars. The rest of it went to child support. So they ask, like they they know what they're doing. They asking somebody to commit a crime after taking that much money away from them. How can somebody live off one hundred and sixty five dollars every two weeks anywhere in America? You know, unless you got some type of, you know, excellent side hustle going on. But that's the plan. That's that's the plan. They want you. To go out there and commit crimes just so you can, you know, take care of yourself. That's why they do all these crazy things like holding your passport if you late on child support, taking you to, you know, summons you to court all the time for over child support, giving you tickets, taking you to jail over child support. Sometimes, you know, if you owe enough child support, this, this guy's is locked up for federal felony child support because they owe so much money. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't, you know. Kids need their dad around, and I know this got a little bit, a little bit off, off a of talk, topic of a, uh, of Kodak, you know, proposing and potentially throwing his whole financial life away, getting married. But you know, this all boils down into one big um, mess. That's 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 the snowball effect. <laughs> when you when you when you impregnating, you know, chicks that. You know this that don't have nearly as much money or, f or financial capabilities as you, or when you marrying somebody you know that that's not you know that doesn't have doesn't make as much as you. For all we know, she'd be looking at him like a lottery ticket.
you know, she look at him like a sucker and she and he about to get licked. And that's 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 my personal opinion on the subject. But you know, if he if he in love, he happy, more power to him. I hope it works out. But judging by you know, judging by the trends of society, I don't think so. But uh yeah, that's in this uh clip. Y'all make sure y'all like like and subscribe. Check out the podcast there once in a while. Just um you can search it on uh Spotify or any other platform. It's is it me? I S I T M E E. And uh check me out when you can. Thanks. Peace out.